Hello everyone, I'm Havoc and this is Factorio Space Exploration Plus and we're starting today's episode over here by our rocket because my robots are very busy <laughs> reaching across the map over here and working on our steel build which we finished like I said we would uh, except for a little bit of belt work here but outside of that everything is good to go we're just building it we're also moving all of this stone out of the way and replacing that but it's taking my bots quite a while while they're working on that we are going to see about going to a different planet and working on one of the first uh, well not the first because the rocket science would be the first space science but one of the newer sciences and I'm looking at the energy tech the energy science pack the energy science pack requires a lot of items and it all starts with holmium which is what I'm highlighting right here this resource holmanite holmanite makes holmium products and this planet has quite a lot of it it's the primary resource the frequency is almost 300 percent size is over 350 richness is over 350 so there'll be plenty of holmanite on this planet but the big thing here is that I sorted by threat threat means biters right the biters on the planet and this planet has zero threat which means there should be not a single biter on this planet whatsoever which is perfect I don't have to bring defenses all I need to do is set up a rocket silo to send resources and myself back and power which I can use solar panels now it does get 48 percent of the solar which means each solar panel will only give you less than half of the power it normally would during the day and that's okay we have very powerful solar panels and eventually we honestly want to look at moving towards uh, nuclear nuclear setups in order to power things a little bit better rather than mass areas of solar panels <laughs> solar panels is obviously free energy once I say free once you have it built now they are very absurdly expensive so they're not free but once they're down they produce everyday energy without any additional cost so that's why I like to go with solar but we'll be looking at nuclear but we're gonna view this surface real fast of where we're gonna be heading here and it's gonna look really weird it is an alien moon is this a moon or a planet I'll have to check in just a minute oh there are cliffs here too <laughs> that will be fun to deal with I have not bothered to make cliff explosives yet because we don't have cliffs on our home world stone we're going to need to bring some landfill or make landfill there I'm not seeing holmium here it is holmanite there's some right here just north of where we're going to come in and land at and there are no biters not a one. You can look around all you want. Here's some more Holmanite. Looks like oil right over here. Yep. So there's a little bit of everything, I do believe. Let's go back here and look at this. It's very low on iron there. But that's okay. We could do core mining to get iron and other resources. But to begin with, I'm not worried about going there and getting anything except Holmanite. I want to get Holmanite and I want to process Holmanite and then bring it to our star base our platform in space so we're gonna want just a few things I'll probably keep what I have here in my inventory we need to remove a few of these blueprints that are erroneous and no longer needed I can always grab new blueprint sections of these items later there's no need to keep them All right, and I'll keep these few right here. That's fine. Now, I want to look at what am I going to need. I absolutely am going to need landing pads. I'm going to need a landing pad for when we're going to that planet, and I'm going to need a rocket, cargo rocket silo to get back. Now, I don't know if I have already set up cargo rocket silos to be made no I have not and that's fine so what we're gonna do is just like I have this one here making us cargo rocket silos 
our landing pads, we're going to make one that makes cargo rocket silos and request all that it needs while we're grabbing the other resources that we're going to need for our little endeavor to a new planet. We're going to have to make sure that we have fuel to make it back here. Not just the parts to build the rocket itself, which I have already got that set aside. I'm packing the cargo rocket sections into the pack cargo rocket sections. Each one of these is five. If we look at where that recipe is, right here. It takes five cargo rocket sections to make a packed version, and the packed version then turn around and unpacks into five. So you can take five slots and condense it down. And that will give us plenty of room. This right here, so this is 10, that's what, 50, 100, so two rows is a rocket. So four rows is two rockets, which means you'll be able to fire two rockets back, which is kind of what I want to take with me, at least for the first one for sure, because I want to be able to leave whenever I want to leave, and then I can have another rocket being made that will bring resources up, and then I can shoot a rocket down there with supplies that I need on the planet. It's, it's very... Uh, very interesting. I have yet to ever do this before myself, so I'm thinking of the ways I want to go about it. I know there's plenty of other people that have played space exploration, and I'm sure they have ways that they do it, and that's interesting to hear. So if you have played and you have any ideas, feel free to go down in the comments and let me know. How do you do it? What do you do? I know uh, someone had commented about the delivery cannon for resources and I did look into it and I felt like it's maybe it's a little awkward per the like 200 resources or so that you send I don't I don't see the value myself I mean I'm sure and this is again a personal preference I'm sure there are reasons for using it that somebody might have but I'm gonna stick with using rockets personally now that's working on our cargo rocket silo. We need to look at how we're going to fuel the rocket to get back. So if I change this from going into novice, where are we wanting to head to? What is it called? Bor Borium? Borium. It is a moon that orbits Ariel. So let's go here and we're going to say look for Ariel. And we should, yep, here's Ariel, and right there is Borum. Now, this tells us how much fuel we need to get there, but it also tells us how much fuel we need to get back from that planet. So what I want to do is make sure that I bring enough fuel to make it back at least one trip. If I can fit two trips, then two trips it is. So we want to look at this and figure out what's the best way to transport the fuel. You can take the fuel and barrel it. Let's see where are the barrels at? Right down here. And that will hold 50 liquid rocket fuel. And then those will stack to 10. So it'll be a stack of 500. You can do like we're doing here and take solid rocket fuel and turn it into liquid rocket fuel. And if we do that, where's that recipe? One solid rocket fuel makes 50 liquid rocket fuel. All right, that's exactly the same because these only stack to 10, right? Yeah, these stack to 10, which means you also only get 500 liquid rocket fuel per. But then you have rocket fuel from water. This produces scrap which is something I probably don't want to deal with just yet. And then we also have solid rocket fuel from vulcanite blocks. So if I were to take and vulcanite blocks and then turn that into solid rocket fuel and then in turn turn that into liquid rocket fuel, let's see how that works out. There's eight vulcanite blocks. Vulcanite blocks stack to 100. So if I take 100, that gives me 12 and a half crafts of solid rocket fuel. 
which is the best yet. The best ratio by far is vulcanite blocks. All right? They do stack to 100. I'm fairly certain now I've got to check. Let's see. Go. To, we need to go into space and look at novice orbit. So we're going to do this. Novice orbit because I have a lot of it up here. Yes, they stack to 100. So you just need to take that and divide it by 8. And what you get is 12 and a half. So 12 and a half crafts, which means vulcanite blocks are definitely the way to go long term. The only problem is I don't have a whole lot of them. I only have what I have in space, 19,000. I probably may go up there and snag those because t space on our rockets is going to be the issue. We need to start looking at exactly what I need. And obviously, I'm going to be riding in the rocket too, so I can utilize the space in my inventory as well. And I want to definitely do that the best that I can. I'm not going to be setting up trains there to begin with, so I don't want to bring trains with me. We can empty train-related items from my inventory. We'll probably not be bringing lights, so let's get rid of lights. Yeah, I forget. I have to empty my logistics here of what I don't want to bring first before I start emptying items out of my inventory. There aren't any bad guys, so we don't necessarily need to bring any more ammunition. I do want to bring some fuel for my jetpacks because I'll be flying around. And then let's look at a few other things. How are we going to process and make this? This is made in a fuel refinery, takes the vulcanite block, and then makes the solid rocket fuel and then the solid rocket fuel needs to go into another fuel refinery to then make the liquid rocket fuel and how long does this craft take one second and this takes one second so really it's a one to one and it doesn't take that long to fuel these things up if you bring some beacons and modules so I'm probably thinking I need at least four fuel refineries to fuel the rocket to head back. So let's look at the Holmanite processing. That's what we're going there for. We're going to need to take Holmanite ore, which is right here, our ingredients, Holmanite ore, and put it in pulverizers to make crushed Holmanite. That crushed Holmanite is then used to make washed Holmanite inside of chemical plants or decontamination facilities, but we're not doing this in space, we're doing it on the ground. So we are going to need chemical plants. And I think I'm already requesting 10. Mm, I may want to do more than 10. I'm not sure just yet. I do just want to get there and get things started so that I can have ores being processed. And we're going to need to look at how we're going to deal with the byproducts of this processing setup as well. Crushing it doesn't do anything, but washing it, it takes six water, it returns five water. So you need to set up a way in which you're going to lose one water and you need to replenish that water, but you don't want to overfill the line to the point where you cannot export out. So we'll have to do some red wire magic or green wire if that's what you're using. But what I need to do is say, hey, make sure I have all the red wire I'm going to need. Am I not? Oh, I'm not even making that anywhere. That's hilarious. We're going to fix that right away. I've been making that by hand this whole time and just now realized it. So... I don't necessarily want a ton of that though. <laughs> don't want red wire coming out of my nose. I just want a little bit to take with me because I'm going to have to do some logic with uh, pumps and red wire in order to make sure that I am not overfilling the water supply and unable to empty the output that comes out. So I'm also going to need some offshore pumps, which are these right here. 20 should be fine. I have 10 on the way, which tells me that I'm probably either 
not making these and I just had 10 in a system, or I am making them and I had a buffer of 10, which seems interesting. They, I guess they stacked to 20 since that was the default, and I'm thinking that probably means I'm not making them automatically. But that's okay. We have our landing pad. How are we doing here? We need storage tanks. And storage tanks are not being made anywhere that I have access to, except for right here. So what I can do, make that a little bit faster, and we are gonna just steal from this one stack's worth. Whoop, I said one stack's worth. Hello. <laughs> I'll get it eventually, don't you worry. 15 clicks later. All right, but that will give us our cargo rocket silo, which it's working on right now. It's perfect. So we can land, we'll be able to make rockets and come back. We just need to figure out how much fuel this right here is. We'll say 110,000. 110,000 fuel, and you make it in packets of 50. Right, liquid rocket fuel comes in packets of 50. So we just need to divide 110,000 by 50 in order to figure out how many solid rocket fuel we need. That's not that hard math. I don't need a calculator to do that. So 100,000, right, if it was just a straight 100,000 divided by 50 is going to be 20,000. Right, 20,000 crafts. And then you're adding another 10,000, so it's 22,000 crafts. No, that would be times five. So it's 2,200. There we go. My brain said, wait a minute, that math is off. That's okay, 2,200 crafts. So I need to bring 2,200 solid rocket fuel equivalent. And maybe just a touch more in case of accidents. That means, this is what, 100? Right, because this is 10 times 10. So I need to do 20, probably 24 rows in this thing. That's gonna be a lot just to take the fuel we need to make a return trip. So this long term, I don't want to be bringing all the fuel with me. Long term, I'd like to be making fuel on the planet. As there is oil there, I have the capability of making solid rocket fuel on that planet. And in fact, that's probably the better way to go. I would definitely say that's the better way to go is just set up an oil set up there where the, we know there's oil on the ground in order to process solid rocket fuel for us so we don't have to bring such a large amount with us. That's, that's the way to go. We can bring the cargo rocket parts. That's not a hard thing to do and that won't take up too much space in here. Uh-oh. We're starting to get hit all over the place as we are expanding our pollution cloud is definitely blooming everywhere and this is where we keep getting hit the worst as you can see all of these little spots even though I can't see there are nests there the fact that the pollution is going away and drifting back in there lets me know that there are nests here consuming pollution here you can see them it just scanned right over there they're not happy with me but we'll be getting the ion cannon very shortly after getting energy science packs up and you better believe i'm going to be playing with that like crazy <laughs> i cannot wait to see what it is like all right so rather than try and bring all the fuel we're going to bring what we need to process the fuel so i want to grab yeah we're not making offshore pumps i'm going to grab this because I temporarily I know this looks awful <laughs> I keep thinking that every time I'm doing more and more of this that people are going to get 
very irritated after a while because I'm just slapping things down with no rhyme or reason to begin with and that is I mean it's exactly what I'm doing but all this is temporary as I get these builds set up where I can process resources more efficiently I'll be removing very horrible bad builds later and I'm gonna have a much neater looking mall eventually <laughs> where I'll be able to train all of the different raw resources into a central area from all of our little module builds and process in that area and make everything we need in a neat, orderly fashion that doesn't look terrible and doesn't drive everyone insane. Don't you worry, I have plans. But in the meantime, we're going to continue working on getting to another planet. And I want to know, am I making pump jacks anywhere? It doesn't look like it only had a couple. What about oil refineries? I already have chemical plants on there. I'm going to definitely want fuel refineries and then oil refineries. And I don't have to have a ton. So I don't have either one of those, any of those. I don't have any of those being made whatsoever. So let's just grab each of them. Pump jack. Easy enough. Oil refinery, fuel refinery. And I have no idea what each of those are requesting. I just want to get it operating as soon as possible. So what is this requesting? That's not a whole lot. That's not a whole lot, and that's not a whole lot, so that's not bad. Sometimes when I do that, they request something absurd, like 7,000 green circuits, and, and it scares me. Why is it asking for 7,000? Well, I know why. Because when you shift-click the recipe in, it says, how much am I going to be requiring in a one-minute time, I think is what it is, one minute's worth of crafts that this thing can do. And so sometimes you get to be absurd when you add all these speed modules in. All right, that will bring those to me. So what we'll do is we will land, we'll work on pumping oil out, processing oil in order to get us some solid rocket fuel to get back. And then the processing of the resources. I'm all over the place here. I want to get to the Holmanite ingots or the Holmanite bar. Holmanite ingots, Holmanite plate. So I'll need to see this extra step just requires an assembler to go from where you cook the powder into the ingot to making it into plate so it, it really doesn't matter it depends on which one stacks better if the ingots stack better we'll be shipping the ingots back on the rockets if the plates stack better we'll be shipping them back but I can already tell you by looking at it that says it makes four plate from one ingot so unless this ingot only stacks to 10 or something crazy which I don't think it does we're probably going to be shipping the ingots and then making plates out of them or whatever else we need to make out of them on the space station. So we need to make holmium powder from our washed holmium. Now the extra stone that will be coming out of washing, I'm probably going to immediately turn into landfill just in order to super compress it and not deal with it. But this one right here, holmium powder, requires me to have cation ion exchange beads and it's got a 50% chance to give me powder, 50% chance to get the beads back, 50% chance to get the washed holmanite back and 25% chance for sand and this again is going to be where I'll have to balance the water but this one is going to be interesting because there's a lot of chances for stuff to happen. There's a chance for the holmium powder chance for it to come back be washed again so a whole setup for that's going to be interesting but I have not even made cation ion exchange beads and it looks like we're probably going to have to do that locally so 
So this is going to be interesting. I'll be able to get really close to this point. I can probably just make the washed Holmanite. Okay, so this is going to be more of more in depth than I was expecting because I also am going to need to get the cation ex ion exchange beads up and running. And that requires vulcanite, plastic, sulfuric acid, and steam. All things that I have except for vulcanite. I have everything that I can make out of that. Easy to come by except for vulcanite. I'm going to need to bring some vulcanite there. And eventually what I can do is set up core mining on the planet in order to get vulcanite there. Because even though it will give me a different core fragment, I'm going to be getting core fragment holmanite. This one right here. If I core mine on that planet, I'll get these. But you notice when you process the holmanite core fragments, you get holmanite ore, stone, and regular core fragments, which you can then process the regular ones, and they give you the chance of all of the different items. So even though the planet has next to no iron on it, I can generate iron from that planet using core mining drill setups. And that's definitely going to be something I want to do because the core mining drill also gives me um, copper, iron, coal. I'll probably end up, again, using the stone primarily just to compress it into um, landfill and warehouse tons of landfill until later use. Okay, so getting that up and running is going to be a little bit more of an in-depth process than I was expecting because of that final little step there. And again, I could always just get it to the washed Holmanite and then bring that. But I really don't want to. I want to set up processing it completely on the planet. Let's check and see how we're doing over here while we've been waiting. I've got a cargo rocket silo. Got a landing pad so we can make it there. We've got a whole bunch of these packed cargo rocket sections we're going to put in the rocket. I probably want to bring some of these because there's a chance the rocket fails, right? And some of this is lost. And if I lose the cargo rocket sections, I don't come back from this trip. <laughs> so I want to bring enough in my inventory to ensure that I can rebuild the rocket. And that's going to be this many. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's 50 and that's 100. So that's definitely more than enough. And actually, let's put some of these back so that I'm only bringing enough to make two rockets. The one where I leave and come back when I need to. And then another set will be left behind for me to be able to send a rocket full of resources back when I can. Now I'm going to need power at this new facility that we're going to be building. And even though it's got a reduced amount of solar, we're going to bring solar panels with us and we're going to bring some accumulators. That'll be plenty more than enough to get us going. We're going to need belts, all the good stuffs. Now belt and such I can put on the rocket and if we lose a little bit of it, it's not the end of the world. But I definitely want to make sure that I have cargo rocket sections and the things that I'll need to produce fuel, which are fuel refinery, chemical plant, and oil refineries. Now, I'm going to want more chemical plants than 10. I know that right out the gate. So where am I requesting these? Uh, 20 is probably, probably good for the initial setup. And I've got plenty of pipes and I can make more on the planet if I need to. I'm bringing a handful of furnaces for processing. Let's grab some more of the belts, like I said, and get that ready. And I'll need some more undergrounds. I'm going to load some of these onto the rocket, like I said. 
oops, <laughs> I accidentally used my nano emitter and chunked out some termite nanobots where there's nothing for them to do. And we'll probably go to right there. And that gives me a full line of belts, two stacks of each of those. Perfect. I'm definitely going to want some more pipes to be thrown in there because I'm going to be dealing with fluids a good bit. Oh, I have my thruster suit on and trying to figure out why I'm so slow when I get my jetpack on. And it's because I'm using the poor, sad little thrusters. Let's see, do I have any? Yeah, I don't have any extra jetpacks added. The thruster suit itself is made with a jetpack in it, and that's the the jetpack that it was utilizing there. Whereas I myself am used to much faster speeds because I jacked up this suit with five extra jetpacks on it and it makes you zoom zoom. And probably keep about that many on us. Now I'm going to look at what we need in order to get stocked up, try and get everything together, and probably in the next episode we are going to travel to Borium, right? That's what it's called, yes, Bo Boroium, or however you pronounce that planet. <laughs> We're going to try and claim it for our own and set up a way to get back and forth between that planet and this planet novice here or orbit I'm not sure exactly I'll probably go to orbit and then come down here via the uh, pod that it comes with but that's going to be it for today's episode like I said earlier you know I'd like to know if any of you have played space, ex space exploration before and how you do things just let me know down there in the comments tell me hey maybe you use that delivery cannon a lot more than I am or you set up rockets or you did some kind of logic where you use one rocket but it's smart and knows exactly what it needs and how you get back and forth. I know later on we're going to be building spaceships. I'm super excited to get into that. I, again this is far beyond any point that I've played this mod pack so far in the past and I am really enjoying it and I hope you guys are too. If you enjoyed today's episode feel free to hit that like button down below. I really do appreciate the, that from everyone that does. It really helps out. I'm a new and grown channel and every like and every comment I get is absolutely valuable to me. I really appreciate it guys. If you're enjoying content like this and you want to see more feel free to subscribe to my channel as well and hit that notification bell so you'll know when my videos go live and I will see you all next time.